Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to discuss back of TwinCat3 the library function. The library function basically come from here. So when we create one TwinCat project, and if you right click your PLC project, and you will see these two options: save as a library, save as a library, and install. Basically, for this save as a library, here you can export your project, this PLC project, as a one library format. And then from another project, you can import this library and directly use the function block or function within this library directly. And also, you can select the library file or compile the library. Compile library, that is the all sealed function. So all your function block and the function, that source code won't be explored. So they will be sealed. So your source code will be protected. I think this is a common driven people like to use this library function because this library function can protect your source code. Okay, let me show how can we use this library function. This is my project A. So inside this project A, this is one source code area. This project A includes all the core function or function block I developed. Basically, for your side, maybe you developed a very important function block or function. So they all tested and they run well well. And now you want to export as one library. Or especially, you want to export one compiled, one sealed library. So you can protect your source code. Just allow the user to use that rather than opening all the source code. So in this case, here, this is my pure project. This is the first thing I had to recommend. You better specially create one specific project. Under this project, it only includes the core function block or function. That's because when we export this project as a library, it will export the entire PLC project. It cannot export individual function block or function. So you better prepare one specific PLC project serve for this library export. The only way to export is this way. So we will save this PLC project as a library. So all the things within this project will be saved or export as a library. So in this project, it only includes the important function or function block you want to export. Okay. In this case, for example, I create the function. This function, I create one function block and one function. Here, the FB. I named IB underscore calculation. So this IB, this is just a demonstration. It sum the data one, two, three, and encode to this results. Okay, this is a function block. And at this function, that's a very simple equation here that using the diameter calculate to the circumference of the circle. And keep in mind, I highly recommend before you export your function block or function, you better write the comments at those input or output. Try your best, write as more as possible. Because when we import this library, with those comments, when we import those function block and the function, when we use that, all those comments can help us to know so what the role of those input, which kind of data I can connect to those input. Without the comments, it's really hard to figure out how we can use this function or function block. We will show this after. Okay. This is a function block and the function. Also, I highly recommend when you name your function or function block, you write this prefix so you know what the role of that. Because when you import them as a library, it's a little bit hard to figure out what the role is that a function or function block. How can I use that? So it's a little bit hard to figure out. So I highly recommend you write this prefix here. And also, I highly recommend you do not create any code within the PRG, the program. So when we create a POU here, we know we can create three styles. One is a program, one is a function block, one is a function, right? So if you create something as this program here, firstly, all the code within this program, if you export your code as a compiled, as a sealed library, when you import as a library, you can now see the detailed code inside, which means when we import the PRG, the program code. And when you use that, basically you have a no idea what it's doing. 
But for the function or function block, basically when you figure out this input and when you see those comments, basically you will know what the functionalities of this function or function block, what they are doing. Okay, this is a couple points I would like to mention. The clean project and function and the function block and without using the program. And now I'm going to export. Okay, before we export, before we save as a library, we need to type in something. If now I directly click this uh, save as a library, for example, now I click the save, so the system will pop up this here, reason, title not specified. That's because before we export, the library need a company name, title, and a version. The version also important. For example, here I will type in EAH, and the title I will write mass underscore uh, EAH library. Okay, and now I will write the region 1.0. Okay, and if you want to fix this version to prevent the one library accidentally got modified, basically you want to make a fly saying this library you cannot change anymore. So you can check this, check the release. Release means so if you try to modify this library after you export, the system will pop up something to notice you. This is the released version. And also, I highly recommend you can write the placeholder description here. The more, the better. Now, for example, I can write export the library demonstration. Okay, now I write here. And now we can export. So we can save and do a build check if the code has something wrong there. Okay, we compile and now we can save. Save as library, keep in mind, we export all those code under this PLC project, save as a library. If you want to import your library, just export, so you can click this save library and install. But personal will, I think the reason why you try to use this library function, that's because you want to seal your code and export, and this code will be used for others. So in this case, I would use this save as a library. And now there are two options here library files library files it will export all the source code so when you import that you can still see the source code and for the compiled library this is a sealed function it only allows the user to use that rather than opening the source code okay in this case i will select this uh, compiled library okay and now i will click this save save under this directory and now i will create another project and demonstrate there are another user try to import this library and try to use that. And keep in mind, now we export the sealed library. Okay, so now I will close this project. Okay, I will create a new project. So this project, I will name that the library application. Okay, a name the library application app. Okay, now I will create one PLC project. PLC project. Okay, now this project is used to demonstrate if there are another user and try to import this library and use this library use only. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the reference this area. And here, the TC2, TC3, they all come from back of the libraries. And now we need to install this library we just export from another project. We need to click this library repository. And, and here we click this install. And now we go to the directory we export that file, the sealed library, compiled library here. So now I click open. Okay, after we install this library, it will show here. Okay, we import this library. It named mass underscore EAH underscore library. Okay, and now I click close. Okay, after this, let's go to add a library. Now we can search the library we just installed. Okay, it named mass underscore EAH underscore library. Click OK. Now we add this library. And keep in mind, when we click this library, the right side here, it can show the current revision. 
because I will show this after. So if you import this library and use that already, and now in your source code area, you found something you need to modify, and then you release the second version, for example, the revision 2.0. And now you need to import this new library here. That time you can see the revision here. And also we can switch the revision. Okay, now we only have one revision here, so it shows 1.0. Okay, and now if I double click this library, so it will show which kind of function or function block inside. So we will see the FB underscore calculation and the FC underscore circumference. So they all here. And now try to imagine if now you are the user, if you try to use this function or function block, how you know what the functionality of that. So that's why I explained it would be nice you write as more as you can. For example, at here, the function underscore circumference, it has a comments here, example two. And this input, the diameter, or the row of this diameter, we have uh, the comments here. And for the function, we will see the input and the output. This is the comments I wrote at our source code there. So this is uh, the function block it looks like. And this is the documentary. So this is the over picture for this input and output. This is the function. Graph and input output. So you can imagine if it doesn't have the comments, it only have this name here. So it's a little bit awkward to use that because you basically don't know what the inside role, what the inside functionality is of that, right? Now let's use that from the program here. Firstly, I can use the function direct. So from this function, I can click this input assistant and I can type in the FC underscore, FC underscore. So it will show up this. This is my library name. This is the, the function, right? And I click OK. Here, you can also see the comments here. So when you try to use that, you know the functionalities of this function. You basically know what the role of that. Click OK. And here we can declare the variable and use that. For example, I will declare two real. One is diameter, one is circumference. So if I go to the GVL, go to here, declare GVL. And here I can declare two real value, diameter. And this is the circumference. Okay, I declare just two variables. And let's go back to main here. So for this input, I will use my variable gvl dot I will use my variable gvl dot diameter equal to the result that is the gvl dot circumference. Okay, this is the function block. We use this function block from this library. And then let's use the function block. The function block we need to declare the instant from the variable list, right? So let me declare for example, my instant named FB calculation. For example, this instant, a date type, that's the function block from the library. So we can right click, click this uh, input assistant. And here we can search FB underscore. From here, as we can see how important of those are function and the function block. So we can search them very easily. If you have this prefix name, FB underscore, or FC underscore, or some keywords. So it allows you to quickly find the function block, right? Or you can find this library first, for example, math underscore EAH, because the system will know now you are searching one data type, so it can search using this keyword, okay? Again, the same thing from here, you can see use this uh, comments know what the basic role of this function block. Now let's go to use that. Go to main. And now if I'm going to use this function block, okay, right click, click this uh, input assistant and the search the instant I just declared. We can go to my project. We can go to the instant calls. And this is my project library application, right? So this is my GVL here. This is the, the instant we just declared. Click OK it will pop up all those input and the results output. 
So we can declare the variable at here and we can use that. This is a function or function block we use from this library. And now if I go to this library, double click, go to here. If I double click this library, for example, if I'm trying to look at the detail, the code within this function block, so the system will show here, no source code available, which means you can use that, but the source code, you can now see that. So you can see it can protect your source code. There's no way to look at the source code here. Okay, this is the one thing. Uh, and now if I save and uh, download, all the code can run. For example, now I download the project and I use that. Okay, for example, if I type in 100, because this function is used to calculate the circumference using this diameter. So if I type in 100, the 314 should show here. Okay, 314. This function without the source code is still working there. If now I click this uh, offline, if I right click, click this uh, go to definition. So it can go to the library here. But now if you double click, it can now show the source code. Okay. Now let's discuss another topic. We import this code and we use that already. And now if from your source area, if you change something already and you try to publish the second version, how can we update this version? Let me show this. So let's go to our source code. So let me open this library creation, this project. This project includes my source code. For example, now from the new version, so we will delete this one input. We only use two, okay, here. And I will save that. And now I try to export. So I need to delete here also, okay. Okay, now I go to the project properties. And here, I will write a new version, let's say 2.0, okay? Click Save. And now let's export. Save as a library. So this library name, I will name that 2.0. All right, export a new version. And now let's go to the application project. Okay, I will close that. Okay, now I'm at the library application. This is a user project. And now I need to import this new library. So, so let's go to the reference. So let's first install the new version, library repository. Okay, click this install. Click this 2.0, this version. So this time I export as a library, see? So now let me open. Okay, it shows 1.0 and 2.0, they all here. Also, you can click them and click this uninstall. So we can wipe out this library from this system. Okay, and close. Okay, after we install, if you go add a library, and now if we search the math underscore EH, library. So when we click that, so it will show this library already insert. That's because we use that already. But how we can know what the current version we are using in this project? We can check using this way. Click this library and then you will find the right side here. Here we can select which version we can use within this project. We can still keep using the 1.0. So keep in mind here. When I select this 1.0, because 1.0 for this function block, it has three inputs. But for the latest version, it only has two. For 1.0, this three showing here, there's no problem here. But now if I switch to 2.0, so we will see this input three is showing error. That's because the function block from the 2.0, we delete that data three. We only have a two inputs here, okay? And if we select this, the default one always select the latest one. So keep in mind, that's why when we import, 
for the code here, this data three will immediately show the error here. Okay. Personally, I recommend every time you import or refresh this library number, you can know what the basic function for that. And uh, when you select that, and when you double click, so it also shows a version number here. Okay. And now if I click this function block calculation, so from this version 2.0, we can see it only has two data here. So we are using the latest one. And once we refresh here, and once we refresh here, the program code behind within the function or function block, they will update it automatically. And now if I go to this library, and keep in mind when we export this 2.0, that time I export this library as the library rather than this compiled library. That means this library includes the source code. And now if I double click this IB calculation, so it can show the source code because I export as a regular library rather than the compiled library. Okay. You can now change here. You can now change them, but you can see them. Okay. You can see this is a small lock here. You can see the source code. Also, if you go online commissioning, you can also see the internal data showing there. You can copy, but you can now change. Okay, so we can see, I also have a couple code within this program. So if I try to use this program, so for example, if I go to main, I try to use the program from the library. Let's see what that looks like. I will click this input assistant and I will type in the project. So I can select this project underscore application demonstration. This is one program. Okay, we will see. It will show like this. So this is a project. If this is a sealed, this is a compiled library. So there's no any way to look at the inside and you have no idea what the functionality is within this program. Okay, this is a basic demonstration on how can we use the library, how can we export from the source code, and how can we input, how can we install this library, and how can we use that. In this case, you can export your program and the function using different PLC project, source PLC project, and export them as a different library file. So for the program file, you can use an view, but for the function or function block, you can export as a compiled library, allows the user use them only, doesn't allow them to look at the source code. Another thing I would like to share that recently I just found, if you have a function and a function block, they have the same name from your library and your current project. So when you import this library, and when you use this function or function block, the actually the project will just use the function or function block from your current project rather than come from the library because your current project will have a, a higher priority comparing with your library if the function block they have a same name they conflict that's why i would like to mention that you better give a specific or special prefix name on your function or function block from your library so they can use the different name and also it's easy for you to search them Okay, and keep in mind, this selection is very important. All right, this is the topic for today, the library function from back of TwinCast 3. To check out the detail of using library function, you can search information system of back of. Then you can search the library creation, and you can find out the detailed explanation for this. All right, that's the topic today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.